Um, again, we're on unit, do we just start unit two today? It is not on the test that you're gonna take later this week. Just with Mission Monday and fall break, we're just kind of doing a couple things out of order, but we're just gonna get as far into this as we can. So unit two is on um, polynomial functions um, and other types, rational, radical functions. And we're starting with polynomial, which are things that you should be pretty familiar with. I know it's been maybe a little while since we've done it, but this shouldn't be super brand new information. So the first thing to think about is a polynomial function. What does that mean? Poly just means many, and nomial means like many parts or pieces or nomials like objects. Um, so it's made up of exponents, and those exponents are usually whole and positive. It's made up of coefficients. It's made up of variables. They have um, constants, so just like a number without a variable attached. Just a lot of pieces that we're pretty familiar with, but we haven't really like necessarily picked out specifically in the past. The biggest thing to note is the exponents are gonna be whole and positive because if they're not whole and not positive, then they're actually other types of functions. So um, we've got like a few examples here and we're just gonna identify if they are functions, if it's a polynomial function or if it's not. Um, the first one, since it has a negative exponent, it's not. If it has a negative exponent, technically it's three over x to the 15th plus 17. And if you have your x in the denominator, that's what we call a radical function, or sorry, a rational function. I made a point in my head to not mess it up and I messed it up. So it's called a rational function because it's like a, a, a fraction, a rational number. The one underneath it is also not a polynomial function, but this time it's because it has a radical with um, an exponent out front. Technically, um, this is just a rash radical function. And again, we'll deal with that later in this unit too. Those are a little special. Polynomial functions are just normal functions that we're used to seeing. So this one's, yep. And this one specifically is a linear polynomial function because it's just x, no other variable. The next one is also a polynomial function. And this one again should look familiar. This is a quadratic. You can also name it based on how many terms there are. So like there's two um, pieces, so that's a binomial. That's a linear binomial. This is a um, quadratic binomial. We could name that. We're not getting that in depth in that today though. And then this last one also is, and it's raised to the fifth power, just maybe a quin, quad, quindratic. I don't know. It doesn't have a special name. We don't deal with it. I did try and throw you off a little bit with this fraction. So if you saw that fraction and you wanted to say no, that is not true because it's a number, it's not the variable. Since the variables are positive and they are whole and they are fine, this is a polynomial function. It's okay. Whew. I'm sorry guys. All right, number two is now dealing with some linear stuff, which I know you did in algebra one. I know you did some in algebra two. I also know we've slept between now and then. I actually just did some like this with my geometry kids. So I know I did this with you two years ago. It says, write the equation of a linear function. I want us to get it into y equals mx plus b, but we might have to do a couple other pieces before that. These are kind of formulas that like, I know we don't use all the time, but we really shouldn't forget. The one tricky piece is I wrote them in function notation. So normally I would just give you two points. This is in function notation. And so we need to remember that if it's f and then a number in the parentheses, that number is your x because we're plugging two into my function. And when I plug two into my function, I get out three, so that's my y value. So that's a set of x and y, and then this is also a set of x and y. So the number in the parentheses with f is your x, and then the number by itself on the other side of the equal sign is your y. Now that we have those two points, I can find slope easy. If it's been a minute since you found slope, remember it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I don't care which points you use in what order, just be consistent. So I'm gonna say 11 minus three over four minus two. 11 minus three over four minus two. 
And then I simplify, 11 minus three is eight, four minus two is two, eight divided by two is four. So that's my slope. And I need to use my slope to help me find my slope intercept. I personally like to use point slope form to do that. You could use your slope intercept, it does not matter to me, but I'm gonna show you using y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. I've got my slope, which is my m. And then you can use either of these points. I can use two and three, or I can use four and 11. It does not matter. I'm going to use four and 11 because it's close when I zoom in and I can still see that when I go. So I've got y is 11 and x is four. So I'm gonna do y minus 11 equals four times x minus four. We have to leave the normal x and the normal y because that's how my equation is gonna be at the end. It has to have an x and a y in order to be an equation. So I have to leave those variables there. Y minus 11 equals 4x minus 16, we distributed. And then add 11 to both sides, 4x minus five. Any questions so far? All right, let's do the same thing on the next one. You start that one and I'll catch up. Start letter B by yourself. All right, if you're waiting for me to catch up, here I come. I've got X, I've got Y, I have X, I have Y. M is four minus zero over six minus negative two. Be careful with that minus a negative becomes a positive. So I've got four over eight and that's one half, easy. And then I'm gonna do point slope again, just cause that's my preferred method. And I'm actually gonna use the first point this time because one of the variables is zero and that makes things so much easier. Again, you can use either set, but I'm gonna do y minus zero equals one half x minus negative two or x plus two. Distribute in y equals one half x plus one. Any questions on numbers one or two? Any questions, any thoughts, doing okay? All right, we're gonna move on to number three then. So we just did identifying polynomials and then we solved for linear functions. Now on number three, we're moving into another easy type of polynomials, which is the quadratic. Again, you spent a lot of time on that algebra two, so we're kind of like steam rolling and going very quickly through this quadratic step that I know you spent like weeks and months on back in algebra two. We're starting by me giving you um, these equations and they're in a special form and we're gonna find the vertex, the axis of symmetry and the direction. It's really great that they're in this form because this is what we call vertex form and it's going to be super easy to find those three pieces of information vertex form. The general way that vertex form is written, it usually goes y equals a x minus h squared plus k, where h and k are your vertex, so whatever number goes for your h and your k. When you have um, your h in the parentheses, you have to flip its sign when it comes out. So see how it's a negative right here, but then I wrote a positive down there. That's just how parentheses work. Parentheses are opposite of what you think. So when I take that h value out, I have to change its sign. I have to flip its sign. So if it was positive, it becomes negative. If it was negative, it becomes positive. The k though is on the outside, so it tells me exactly what it is. It tells me it's positive. I write a positive. All right. 
the axis of symmetry is always the x value of my vertex. It's always just whatever h is. Think about it. If I have a parabola, which I know I just drew a really crappy one, but just bear with me. That's my vertex. If I were to fold down the axis of symmetry, it should be the same thing on both sides. Again, I drew a pretty crappy version, so just pretend it looks better. If I could pick up my iPad and fold it down that, that dotted line, they should be the same on both sides. And this point is the lowest point, which is my vertex. So my axis of symmetry, the equation for that line is just x equals whatever the x value of my vertex is. And then its direction is based on the number out front and it's based on the sign of the number out front. So if it's a positive, it's an upward facing U like normal. If it's negative, it's a downward facing U, opposite of what would normally be happening. All right, so that was some background. Maybe you already knew that, maybe you didn't. If you didn't, I hope that was a nice refresher. If you did know it, then I hope that wasn't too boring. But I'm now gonna identify my vertex and my axis of symmetry and my direction on this problem. So there's my H and there's my K. So my vertex is opposite of what's in the parentheses. My H becomes a negative one and my K stays at negative four. So my vertex is negative one, negative four. My axis of symmetry, I use AOS to represent that, axis of symmetry. That's the X value of the vertex. So my X value of the vertex is negative one. That's it. And then in this picture, it has a negative in my three. So I'm gonna say that it's going down. It's a downward facing parabola. Any questions on how I knew those things? All right, let's do the next couple. I've got one half X minus three squared. You can pretend that's like plus a zero behind it to have a vertex. Again, my vertex is my H and my K. So in this case, I have positive three and then zero. My axis of symmetry is whatever my X value was, which is three. And then it does not have a negative, so it's positive, which means it goes up. Any questions on number two? All right, what about number three? Can someone help me? What's my vertex on number three? Negative 310. Perfect. And then what's my axis of symmetry? Negative 3. Good. And then is it going up or down? Up. Awesome. Thanks, Brooke. Okay. Any questions on that one? That one was pretty easy. There was no math. We just pulled it out of the equation. Okay, I'm, I let us up, we're scaffolding our way up. So the next step up the ladder is where it's a little harder, where it's not in vertex form. We have to put it into vertex form in order to solve. So flip your paper over or scroll down. Number four says find the vertex axis of symmetry and direction. Okay, we were already doing that, but it says do it by rewriting them in vertex form. So we're going to rewrite these in vertex form. Now we did vertex form when we completed the square. So you can write complete the square if that helps like jog your brain on what we did and when we did this. We did this back in unit P and I know that you also had done it in algebra two. That being said, I know a lot has happened between now and then. So we're just gonna review it slowly together. The other thing is all of these, I have coefficients in front of my numbers. So I'm gonna be kind of careful about that. So the first one, it says negative two X squared plus four X minus three. So first thing I need to do is set it equal to zero and get my constant to the other side. So I've got negative two X squared plus four X equals three. I left blanks, but I'm not ready to fill them yet because I still have this coefficient in front of my X squared. I have to factor that out of everything before I'm ready to do my, to fill in my blanks. If I factor a negative two out of negative two X squared, I'm left with X squared. And if I factor a negative two out of four X, I'm left with negative two X. 
We did some with coefficients in the past, so that shouldn't be too, super brand new. When we complete the square, we have to use, um, we have to find the blank. And I do that by doing B divided by two squared. That was messy, let me try that again. B divided by two squared. B is this number right here. So I'm gonna divide it by two and square it, and then that's gonna fill in my blank. So negative two divided by two squared. That's negative one squared, which is one. That is what completes this to be a perfect square. And as a perfect square, this is going to be x minus 1 squared. If I were to factor x squared minus 2x plus 1 down, it would be x minus 1, x minus 1, which is x minus 1 squared. Now, I can't fill in my blank on the other side with just plus 1 because I didn't just put plus 1 on one side of the equation. I did positive 1 times negative 2 because it's in that parentheses. So in order to balance my equation, I need to do negative two times one, and that's what gets added to the other side, which is negative two. If you have a number outside the parentheses, you have to take that into consideration. Everything else stays the same. I've got my negative two outside my parentheses. It equals one, because I did three minus two. And then the last step is to just minus that one from both sides. So I've got negative two, x minus one squared minus one. You can say equals zero, you can say equals y. I'm probably gonna say f of x equals that because that's how it started. It said f of x, so I just put f of x in. So I've got f of x equals negative two, x minus one squared minus one. Now, I've finished completing the square and I've finished writing it in vertex form. And from here, I'm gonna pull up the vertex and the axis of symmetry and the direction. Are there any questions about completing the square before I do that? Okay. So I have my H and K. Here's my H, here's my K. Remember my H switches signs. So my vertex is going to be positive one, negative one. My axis of symmetry is my x value, so x equals positive one. And then since it had a negative in front of my two, it's going down. Any questions on that one? Any concerns? Okay. The next one has a fraction, and so we're actually just gonna look at that tomorrow because I don't wanna rush that too much. So we're gonna skip this one for now, but the last one we will do is letter C. So let's jump down and do letter C together. Why don't you actually try and start it? Start writing, start doing the complete the square, and then I'll jump in in a second. All right, so if you started or if you're waiting for me, doesn't matter. You should have set it equal to zero and then you should have factored your three out. Um, that leaves me x squared plus four x with a blank. And then like we've been doing all day, I have to do my b divided by two squared. So four divided by two squared is equal to two squared, which is equal to four. I put four in the parentheses because that completes my square. That makes this x plus two squared. But if I want to fill my blank in on the other side, I can't just write plus four. I have to do four times three, which is 12. So I've got to write plus 12 over here. Everything else stays the same. I've got my three out front. I'm gonna do my zero plus 12 on the other side and have 12. And then the last thing I do to complete the square is to move the 12 to the other side. 
3 x plus 2 squared minus 12 equals 0. Okay. Um, and you can set that equal to f of x or y or 0. It really doesn't matter. I'm just trying to stay consistent. All right, can someone tell me what my vertex is here? Negative 2, 12. Negative 2, 12. Awesome. Don't forget that negative with the 12 as well. The y value keeps its sign and the x value switches. So negative 2, negative 12. And then what's my axis of symmetry? X equals negative 2. Awesome. And then, Ellie, just take us home. Is this going to be an up or down? Up. Oh, awesome. All right. Ellie, thanks for help on that one. Brooke, thanks for help on the other one that I asked for. All right. That's all we're doing today. Are there any questions on what you see right now? Okay. I'm going to stop share. Um, I um, am sorry I didn't print this off for you, so I know that your notes might be a little screwed up at the beginning, and I am sorry that we're going a little bit out of order for this test, but I appreciate your guys' flexibility. Um, and if you have any questions prior to this test, please make sure that you get help from me. We will have a whole day to review on Wednesday, um, but if you know that you need more than that, please don't be afraid to ask. Um, I'm gonna let you guys go a couple minutes early. I'm excited to see you guys. Um, I guess I'll see you in the hallway tomorrow, but um, in class on Wednesday. And if you need anything, please let me know. Bye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.